So I've been watching a lot of Ninjago for the past couple months, and I figured it'd be time to make a tier list ranking in each season. Specifically, the Masters Ninjutsu era, as I haven't started watching Wild Brain yet. But once I'm done with Wild Brain, I'll be sure to come back and I'll complete the tier list ranking in each season, adding seasons 11 to 15. Dragon's Rise won't be included, as it's its own series, not really like. I mean, I guess you could call it season 16, but I'm just not gonna include it. Uh, but yeah, there we go. The two pilot episodes, I think, do a great job at setting up like the environment of Ninjago. And having Kai be the main character for a little while was a pretty good feeling. Until this little shit took over. <clears throat> anyway, all it's really there for is to introduce the characters and I'm just gonna give it a B tier for now, just cause it's all the the whole purpose of the pilots is to just set up Ninjago and the whole world around it and what we're really getting ourselves into. Rise of the Saints was the first real season we got in Ninjago. This is one of the most interesting seasons to me, and that was mainly due to the mystery of who was gonna become the Green Ninja. Hell, I still remember when everyone was thinking Kai was gonna become the Green Ninja. I also really like the interactions between the ninja this season, especially when they unlocked their true potential and things like that. It was just, it was really good to me. Overall, Rise of the Saints was a good season. There was just uh, some other seasons I thought were better, and some other like moments I thought were better. A tier. Also, Pythor was a top tier villain. Okay, moving on. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't the biggest fan of the first half of the season. And that's mostly because the amount of filler episodes this season had, except for, except for maybe Child's Play and Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Those get passes. But for how good the second half of the season was, I would give it a pass. The second half was when the season really started to get good, especially because it took place like it was building up to the final battle. And the final battle between the Golden Ninja and the Overlord is literally one of the best pieces of fiction I've ever seen. Even though people may not like it for some bad writing and filler episodes, I really enjoyed Legacy of the Green Ninja, and it was a fun watch because we watched. I watched it with my friends a few months ago, and it was unmatched feeling. Also, Dareth definitely carried this season, which makes this even more of an S tier. In fact, this show was so good that the creators didn't even plan on making more after season two, but because it did so well, Lego like wanted them to make more Ninjago, so they did, and we got rebooted. Rebooted was, uh, interesting. I'll get the positives out of the way first. I really like that Zayn was the primary focus and kind of the main character this season, because with this whole theme of, like, being stuck in, like, a program, it, it just works so well, for, in my opinion. I think Pixel is a great addition to the series, too, and Zayn's sacrifice at the end of the season was, in my opinion, it was a beautiful way to end off the season, and definitely one of the most memorable moments in the show. Now enough praising it, I wasn't a big fan of Reboot in all honesty. It's definitely the inferior one of the first three seasons, and I'll explain why. First off, I think bringing back the Overlord in this season was super pointless when he was already defeated in season 2. I didn't really I didn't really understand the purpose of him coming back. Hell, I think Cryptor would have been a better main villain than the Overlord this season. And then you have the Love Triangle. God, why did I think adding this was a smart move? I completely hate the Love Triangle. Especially because me and my boy Cole a douche this whole season. And him and Jay just arguing back and forth with each other about Nia just got so annoying so fast. This is a hot take, but I didn't like the half mask that much. They aren't terrible, but every other suit just felt like somewhat superior than the half mask. Not you, but yeah, overall it wasn't a terrible season. Definitely wasn't one of the greatest seasons. High C tier. Tournament of Elements. Boy, where do I begin? Tournament of Elements was, in my opinion, the best season of Ninjago I've ever watched. I love every moment of it, such as it taking place on Chen's island, thinking, like, I think Chen was a great villain. Top tier, being able just to capture how insane he really is. Sensei Garbodon was a great character in the season, too, as he was the main sensei in the season instead of Wu. And this sacrifice at the end always just hit hard for some reason, man. It was just, it was awesome. I really love how the season of sport also talked about the war with the Anachondri, as to me that was that was one of the most interesting parts of the season. Like Chen wanted to bring back the Anachondri rule in Jago, 
It was also amazing how we saw new elemental masters because it was able to expand the world of Ninjago rather than only focusing on the ninja. Even the tournament of elements itself was also super badass and enjoyable to watch. And I think the half masks do look better this season. No sleeves, just makes it just fits them more. Easiest last year of my life. Possession was definitely my second favorite season so far. I've seen this season get hate just because the villain is quote unquote mediocre, but I completely disagree. And I'll explain in a minute. Possession honestly looks visually pretty and definitely one of the best seasons visually. Now onto the villain that they called mediocre, Moro. I think Moro is not a top tier villain, and I find it like just super cool how he possessed Lloyd's body for pretty much the whole season. And the ninja having to stop him without their powers is also really cool and interesting to watch. One of my only complaints though, it's not like a plane, it's just I find it silly, it was his motive. Moro did all of this just because he wasn't the green ninja. Like, I find it hilariously stupid at the same time. He got the Tai Lung treatment, I can't even lie. I also really like Nia's character this season, as we see her grow to become the Water Ninja, and just her unlocking her true potential was just amazing to see. Though, I, I do wonder why Cole didn't get wet. It was plot armor? Overall, another top tier season last year. Skybound is a season where you either love it or you hate it. There's no in between. I personally like Skybound as I feel Jay really needed that character development because for the past 5 seasons he's been the exact same. If I didn't make it obvious enough, Jay is the main focus this season and it also really focuses on his relationship with Nia and how she's just more than just the girl ninja and stuff like that. We did see Nakon as the main villain and I think he's an alright villain. Moro and Chen are definitely better but Nakon is he's good, he's good too. I think the idea of using people to grant their three wishes was a bit goofy, and not to mention the writing as well. It just kind of just, I don't know, it kind of got everyone nowhere. And making Jay the main character, even for a bit, sounds awful on paper, but it actually works well here. My main problem though is at the end of the finale. Uh, when Jay uses his last wish, he basically says, I wish Nagatana was never discovered. Anyway. Which, doing that just. Re re rewind in time and basically it, it, this whole season was kind of pointless at the same time only jay and Nia remember it so it is skippable but it's also like it's also really entertaining to see jay's character development and it was in jail it was personally i thought it was enjoyable there was just you know also some okay bad writing keeping it from a tier so yeah it's a b tier Hands of Time. My god, this season is stinky. Hands of Time, in my opinion, is the worst season in the Masters Minjutsu era. And let me explain. The writing in this season was atrocious. The Time Twins had so much potential to be good villains, and that was taken from due to trash writing. I think the only time I really liked the Time Twins was at the premiere of Hands of Time, like the beginning of the first episode when Akronox fights Wu. The whole plot where Kai and Nia are searching for their parents was executed very poorly. And that sucks because it was actually a pretty good idea. So it's basically just Kai want Perrin back, Kai get Perrin back. I will say though, I do like Kai and Nia's character development this season as Kai's character development in Tournament of Elements was overshadowed by Lloyd, in my opinion. I actually thought Wu was a good character this season. Him, I think this season definitely like focused on him like the most, in my opinion. Just in involving the time blades and all that. And also I will say this animation is as smooth and fluid as my ass hair. It is so bad. To be fair, I can cut him some slack because at the time they were also working on the Ninjago movie, which wasn't that great in my opinion. But yeah, this, I'll give this a D tier. It's not bad enough to give it an F. That is for another season later on, the Wild Brain Era, which we will go over next video. I should have done Day of the Departed before Hands of Time, but whatever. Day of the Departed is overhated in my opinion. Yeah, it's not great, but it is an awful. Personally, I thought it was cool how some of the old villains came back from the Departed realm for a bit, and I liked how Moro chose to help the ninja by sacrificing his one time to come back to help them. 
I didn't like Sensei Yang as a villain though. I thought he was just super boring. And some of the writing was pretty bad, which is why I did, it's not great. But my favorite part about all of this was the end of Cole's ghost story. However, I feel like if this was a season, it would have been a lot better, but it was okay. C tier. Sons of Dragon was a big deal for Ninjago as it released after the Ninjago movie. I honestly liked how they chose to use the movie redesigns, so it shows the season also takes place a year later after Hands of Time. And I just really liked the redesigns in general. I thought I thought the ninja really needed it. This is definitely one of my favorite seasons of the show by far. You have the Sons of Dharma and Biker Dane trying to bring back Dharma himself, which was super interesting to see. I really liked Lloyd's character this season too, as it mostly it mostly was an emotional fight between father and son as Dharma is coming back. You wouldn't hurt me. Your son. I have no son. I also like the Samurai X mystery as well. This season was definitely one of the show's darker seasons, just like with the tone and everything. And also kind of explains why Harumi is one of my favorite villains, as her and Lloyd's friendship gets dark super fast, as she's also the one trying to bring back Garmaron to destroy his son. I don't know, all, all the sons of Garmaron I thought was just super, super dark, super entertaining, and I felt like it was growing with its audience as well, which I, which I loved. Easy S tier. Hunted is also such a good season in my opinion. I really like the idea of the ninja being split between two realms, such as half the story taking place after season 8 and Ninjago, and the other half taking place in the first realm. I really liked all the moments that happened in the first realm, for example like Wu dating his memories back and being able to reconnect with the ninja. My main problem with this season was the villain. I did not like Iron Baron. I thought he was super lame and boring in my opinion, and his writing was... it, it wasn't great. I will say this season did have a top tier finale and the fight scenes were also amazing. It's a great season, but I just didn't like it as much as the others. High A tier. I'm gonna be honest, March of the Oni was my least favorite of the Oni trilogy. I didn't like the Omega that much as I thought he was super basic and underwhelming and would have liked the season more if it was more episodes. I really liked Lloyd and Garmanon's bond in this season, as well as some of the callbacks to old Ninjago, such as the Tornado of Creation. I am glad the Golden Weapons came back too, however the ending of this season felt pretty rushed and I feel like it would have had a bit more potential if it wasn't only 4 episodes. A tier. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the ranking. If you didn't like some of my rankings, that's fine. But these are just my opinions. You have your opinions, I have mine. But yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.